Humanity operates in a perpetual state of hope. The endless expanse of space and a seemingly limitless supply of resources. Nature in abundance. In the vast expanse of Alaska's tundra, problems of overconsumption, climate change seem minute, distant, and unreal. We can't tell that things are going terribly wrong. In 2016, six students and their teacher joined Woods Hole Research Center scientists on the Arctic Boreal Vulnerability Experiment. The student's study is to learn about climate change from the equator to the Arctic and if and how they can adapt to a changing world. Because fundamentally, we need to understand the enormity of the problem in order to see what is worth saying. Saw some caribou on the way out here. A lot of ravens around the campsite. We just got to our campsite today, and this will be our first night ever sleeping here. We are cooking, well, Jonah's cooking rice that we're going to put on these bad boys. Tortillas. There's a couple things going on here. Over on the other side of this ridge, there's an Eddie Covariance Tower and there's an area. The reason that he came here is because this is an area where, like, on the southern boundary of permafrost, it's pretty warm and there's, like, a, a permafrost degradation gradient, like, over there, which we're not going to. So that was, like, observed for a long time and carbon dioxide fluxes measured and looking what happens to carbon as the permafrost thaws. After the results of that, questions when you when you make observations you can't always tell like what the drivers are of what you're observing so that's why we set up experiments so this is a permafrost thaw manipulation experiment um, and so in this we built this in 2008 and 2009 and then also then in 2010 or 11 or something I also installed a drying experiment so we're just going to walk yeah, down yeah, to that right. wow. yeah. cool. So taste, put a pinch of that in your tongue and get the texture and the taste. And then do the same with this unburned stuff on the top. <laughs> so your mouth is way more sensitive than your fingers and when you're feeling texture differences, sometimes Whoa. it's useful to do this. Wow. Yeah, that <laughs> That's way really works. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. the problem is if you disturb it, those disturbances can radiate out. Like when you see, drive down roads through the tundra, you'll see all these water bodies that form on the edges. And they'll ex extend out from the road away. So the disturbances are now localized. 1.15? So if you yeah. leave it open, you'll you'll see sometimes these things change. Remember that, well, all that water yeah. is running down that side? Is that because someone didn't plug it back up? Well, I don't, we don't know exactly, but you can see that place where they stuck that post in the ground, they had a sensor there, and all this water was bubbling out. And uh, there's this water under pressure. You remember that little mat we saw yeah. where jumping up and down? Somebody drove the probe through it and all the water came shooting out. So there's this weird layer of pressurized water there. Like charcoal layer is new organic accumulation and it all burned down to the mineral last time. It's so cool. It's breakfast. <laughs> and obviously it's um, international since we're having bananas, oh, organic, Mexico, Mexico. Mexico. Mm -hmm. North America actually. Mm -hmm. Mexico. Local flavor. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Local flavor, which are these pea shoots. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing as food. Yeah. Yeah. What are they called? They're like wild peas. Wild peas? Yeah. yeah, so it could be plant matter, it could be soil, it could be bone, it could be a dead animal. It's just anything ground that's below zero degrees Celsius for two or more years. That's the like official definition, and it's that's a really that definition is just like it's just the physical state of frozen versus non-frozen. So it's a like the permafrost area is is really huge, and because it's not one thing, 
and even carb soil carbon or soil is not one thing so there's a lot of different um, factors that affect how fast permafrost will thaw the group of researchers were here with some questions about that research we have lots of stuff to do it with we're setting it up now this is a recorder thing procedure it wiggles around this is a little microphone for my voice these are called resin strips the way they work or the way that we use them is we take this strip and we bury it in the ground and tie the fishing line to a flag or something and then they'll sit there for a year and um, nutrients in the ground like for example this is an anion strip so nitrate which is a nutrient that plants use um, is an anion and it will diffuse towards the surface of this and then exchange with um, chloride we soak these in hydrochloric acid so there's chloride along the strip now that's bound to it so the chloride will exchange with the nitrate and then when we pull them out we extract the nitrate off and the more nitrate there is in the soil the more nitrate gets bound to the strip and so we get a relative number of nitrate availability between our sites unfortunately the food hasn't almost finished <laughs> it's right here. Yeah. These are going to hold the CO2 sensors when they come up, and they're also going to be connected. I think we could help out. Uh, what you'll see on this is that it's already cut, it's already split, so I'm just going to slide them in. So the first thing you want to do is get all four of them pushed through here. Okay. So go ahead and label them now. Basically, plug them in here. Very simple. Just like that. But you can't do it like that. It's got to snake through the case. Uh -oh. And we have to know which one is which one. It's actually a mixture of all the fine roots from a bunch of sites around the tundra and boreal areas here. Did someone program this? Put it in, and then we're doing 12 of them. So when we go to these sites, we're burying these root bags in the ground Sounds and then like picking them up over the years and changing, measuring how much the mass of the root changed. And then we can get the decomposition rate of the roots. Mm. So, what? It's 12? Yeah, 12 per bag. And then just write all the labels of the bags on the outside. And the so camera, which one's which? Here you go. Here you go. And here's bags. Where are we? We're at the Trans Alaskan Pipeline right now. Say, I love oil. Jared.